the science behind my coaching methodology. It takes you from being unaware of something and you go, whoa, like, whoa. Work and life harmony. It's not only about work-life balance. I think that's what everybody thinks when I mention that. It's part of it, but it's also about harmony within yourself, harmony in your career, and doing the things that you love. And then it's also about creating harmony in the workplace between coworkers and leaders and leaders being able to create harmony. And ultimately, it's about creating harmony that goes out into the world. Hello, this is Coach Kim Betty, also known as Coach KB, <laughs> uh, with you today. And I am excited to share the science behind my coaching methodology. It takes you from being unaware of something and operating in a, a more unconscious way to being fully conscious and you go, whoa, like, whoa, we'll call it the like, whoa moment, right? And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And it's a long word, trans theoretical model of change. You can Google it, TTM. It's also known as the stages of change. And it's really what we all go through whenever we're embarking on setting goals, making um, a transition in our lives, starting something new, a new year. You're going to hear the homework of Lorena looking back to move forward. I want to, though, take us on a deeper journey on what we're really listening for and what you're doing when you do look back to move forward. Um, many of you now know who Lorena is. She was on the podcast uh, actually from last year for the Great Resignation, and she's a teacher who went on a year-long sabbatical. She's actually back teaching now. However, she's getting coaching to focus on getting her wellness, her holistic wellness business sustainable, uh, especially once she retires. But first, let me back up and tell you about the stages of change. The first is to go from not thinking about something to thinking about it. And we call that pre-contemplation. And so you can think about that as like someone gives you some feedback and you're like, oh, whoa, I never really thought about that before. And then the second phase or stage is to go from thinking about it to preparing for it. And you can imagine that we go to thinking, 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 kind of obsessing and Googling and reading and talking to people about it. And then eventually we're like, let me get to preparing that. What are the steps I need to take? What do I need to do to prepare if I'm going to get myself healthy, what am I going to do? How much water do I need to drink? How much exercise do I need? How do I stretch? And then we go to the next stage, which is preparing for it to action. And a lot of people really get excited around that moment because you really think you're doing something and you are. It's a very important step. You got to realize though, these are the baby steps. And the reason we get tripped up often is we take this action phase and we think we got it. And the interesting thing about the action phase is, you know, you start exercising, you start uh, meditating, you start to do your stretching, you start to be more organized and, you know, uh, maybe you practice time management in a new way. You start to communicate to your team uh, using the principles that you learned. The issue is we probably will go into relapse and that's a stage in itself. It's to go from action to relapse back to action to relapse, back to action. Now, the key though is you wanna relapse and go back to action because a lot of times people go from relapse to not thinking about it or relapse to back to ruminating on it and thinking, thinking, thinking or preparing again. Ah, nope, you know enough, let's just get back into action. Drink your water, do your exercise, get back to communicating, get back to following your structure, you get the, you get the hang of it. So once we are going from preparing to action and action to relapse, we get into a maintenance phase. And I love that phase. I remember when I was uh, losing weight and I lost, I think it was 25 to 30 pounds. Finally got back into my bikini, feeling great. I was eating clean 
eating healthy and then I went into a maintenance phase and the maintenance phase was cool I for me personally I did like an 80 20 that means I ate uh healthy uh and clean uh five days and then I had a I call it cheat I just like to use that word I had a really splurge day and then I also allowed myself um one two splurge meals throughout the week as well, which could have also been another splurge day if I wanted it to be the whole weekend. The point is I maintained it for three years. It wasn't until I relapsed again, right? And that's when I fell off and I'm trying to get back on now. So you can be in maintenance and still relapse. Then there's a beautiful stage of going from maintenance to transformation or transition. And that means you got it. Like even if I was to fall off the wagon again, I would get right back on. And it's just not an issue that I would gain the weight again. It would just be, oh man, I've been not doing so good this week. Let me get right back on track. So those are the stages of change, pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, relapse, maintenance, and then transition or transformation. Okay, so when you are listening to Lorena talk about her looking back to move forward and her experiences that she's paying attention to from her perspective of looking at her business and growing her business, I want you to listen for those aha moments, those like whoa moments when she is going from not thinking about it to thinking about it like whoa didn't think about that like whoa that's pretty interesting so when you look back to move forward one of the things that you're doing is awakening and wake up to these aha moments that will get you unstuck because we don't want to be stuck right I was reading this blog the other day Um, I really enjoyed it it's it was you have a calling uh, dot com and they were talking about the seven reasons people stay stuck one of the reasons that they said that stood out for me was saying, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know what. And when you hear the coaching session with me and Lorena, you're going to hear her say, I don't know a lot. And you're going to see me challenge her in that. And so those aha moments of waking up and not thinking about it to thinking about it and going, oh, I do know or I can find out. And, and not having the I don't know be a crutch can help get you unstuck. So today we are going to do that together. Take a listen to me and Lorena talking about her journey, looking back to move forward and like, whoa. To your first debut of your coaching session out in the public and then also um, Angelia's feedback too. Um, I really liked her feedback because um, I'm fortunate enough and unfortunate to still be working while I'm putting my steps together. And so it was super real for me to just hear her say, like people who are getting a check every two weeks have a different perspective than those of us who have second mortgaged our homes you know, to do this. And so the seriousness and how far you might possibly go to fulfill your dream was super like shocking and clear to me because I never had to think of it that way because I've always worked and done it for fun. So that was super surreal. Um, I liked what she said about having a community of people who support you. Like, I don't think I have that now. Like I have some tangential folks all over the globe Mm -hmm. that, you know, to different degrees we've kept in touch, but not like my girls come over, like you haven't, you know, been out to eat in forever. So that building of community, I thought was important. I don't, I don't, I don't know any more than I did before, but Mm -hmm. I like that somebody, you know, had, different a different voice to hear answers from because I don't really know what I want (laughs) it is about grace it is the assignment was how that how they say she understood the assignment you know Mm -hmm. the assignment was to do a life review as simple as it can be a piece of paper Mm -hmm. be creative Mm -hmm. um and also to look back to move forward look back Mm -hmm. over your ups and your downs and 
without judgment grieve if you need to right. you know I love that you went back and looked at pictures to see where you mm-hmm. were sad and where you were happy and saw even the emotions of it yeah. and then ferociously grab what's left like Sankofa you know says to go right. back and in, in the you know the mm-hmm. Ghana um, natives to go back and fetch what's been left behind and you nailed it I mean she understood the assignment you know what I mean you nailed mm-hmm. it in a if you were you know one of my students and I was your teacher, I would give you an A++ because you exceeded what was asked. So one of the things that I enjoyed about this, well, one of the things I did not enjoy is that my memory is terrible. (laughs) I was just like, why are some years so blank? I'm sure more life review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, wow, my memory is terrible. And then I looked through one of my old phones. So that helped me some looking through Mm -hmm. the old calendars. One of the things that I came up with, like get comfortable with this, like I was calling it brain drain, like they used to do with the morning Mm -hmm. pages. Um, Mm -hmm. I first started writing in pink, like all the stuff I remember that went well. And then I would use blue to go back and write about things that I remember that didn't go well or like different transitions. So one of the things that I noticed that keeps repeating is like, um, I go back and forth, like being overly sensitive in my personal life that I throw myself into my professional life. So sometimes the low points professionally are high. No, the high points professionally are sometimes growing from low points personally. So that was something that I noticed that surprised me. Looking back through some pictures on Instagram, I was like, I was so sad in that picture, but it's such a pretty picture. Um, It was connecting me to old service experiences and how when you move into a situation where you can't do community service like you're used to doing you don't realize that the part of your heart that loves that needs that and I think that that's part of like this kind of came to me as I was working on it that's part of why I probably took it so hard being in Egypt because I wasn't doing any service there Mm -hmm. but I realized what am I doing in this in this country when black people are struggling at home and I've always been a part of that fight why am I here but it's important for me to realize well next time I move I need to move into a situation where my community service heart doesn't get shut down because I didn't realize it was a thing until I had to go back through and really think about this stuff I never see it coming but I do stuff for good reasons and then it blossoms so I was like okay the one thing I can see from these years that I remember is that that's my pattern. I don't really ever know. Like I have a dream, but it never, like it's, I don't know. So I was like, okay, why am I, why am I stressing myself like this? Because this is my pattern. And so that was scary and relief Mm -hmm. to realize that. Um, And so just looking at the times in my life where I was good at taking the sting out and accepting things and times when I haven't been. And so I think one of the things I noticed is like sabbatical was a success to me because I like structure. So for me to go into an unstructured kind of world and come out stronger and better and all of these things, like it even teaches me something about who I became to do that well. Um, And I remember some things that I really like to do, like being on the professional development committee and those things that are leadership roles in schools. Mm -hmm. Um, So I have a lot of those and like my dreams are back. So I like that. Um, I do hear you searching like, who am I? Right. I think everything's going to be so simple for you when you just be who you are. I know it sounds so simple, but that you yes. can see who you are because like when you just said you are a yogi you are a yogi right. when you live your mm-hmm. life that way that's I hear that all the time about you you know what I mean you are gonna you're not gonna strike a pose you're gonna right, <laughs> right. right. And so when you say something like I gotta get it together for my retirement that's not <laughs> that's not that right yeah it feels forced yeah 
you sound like you live your life like a Zumba, but yet you're a yoga. I'm a yogi, right. A yogi, yeah. yes. So what is yeah. that, how do you hear that and what can you begin to do about this? Yeah. And all I'm doing right now is understanding you. Right. So that I can partner yeah. with you. It, it's, um, that feels, that feels like a good description of me that I probably um, wouldn't agree to if you hadn't, you know, put it all together, Mm -hmm. but without somebody coming in, being an impartial cog in this crazy wheel of what we say to ourselves. You're very, I want you to understand that meant, mean it as a compliment. Let me see if I can give a good analogy. Like there are very few people in this world that I say, I'm not talking about you at this moment, but Mm -hmm. they're, have you met people before that are very super like process logical oriented yet they're also people persons Mm -hmm. i only had a couple of leaders that are that way i mean they are totally 100 percent corporate financial number all that bottom line and they're people persons and like Mm -hmm. it's like whoa that's an interesting combination that you can do both and i've literally only met two like my entire career and i coach a lot of leaders like you got the people my mentor happened to be one which was wonderful you remind me of that kind of flavor because although you are a spiritual yogi, natural, but you're also very structured and corporate and Mm -hmm. you see what I mean? So that is an interesting combination. Mm -hmm. So I need you to understand you are very unique. It's not that you're struggling with all these things. You are all those things. Okay. What I'm trying to get you to get is that since you are, you can stop struggling with it. Okay. There's nothing to struggle with. You really right. are a very unique individual. So when I say you're spontaneous and free spirit, you are, but at the same time, you're very structured yeah. and very, mm-hmm. what, what would be the word? Uh, I'm comfortable with scheduling. Like I like it. Yeah. I like stability and structure. Structure, and there you go. Structure yeah. and stability it's... and spontaneous and yeah. free spirit. Mm-hmm. Not everybody is that. Let's crack capture that. Structured and uh, what did you say the word was? Stability. Uh, yep, stability. Stability and spontaneous and a free spirit. <laughs> That's very important for you to see. Though, and those are two completely opposite kinds of people typically mm-hmm. yeah true 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 i, wrote I that know down. i'm a but super corporate when you do it. entrepreneurial spirited person once i figured mm-hmm. that out my girl was like oh the stuff you be talking about sound corporate i'm like i can't help it i finally decided right that that's, that's who i am do. yeah okay once you can really then you won't have to effort or clean up your efforting any longer that's right. what i'm looking for you to do <laughs> Go. Mm-hmm. Go, 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 go. But, mm-hmm. but, but honor it. What I'm saying, and I don't even mean that. I'm saying the go, go, go of you is that it's a weird combination. Imagine a free spirit mm-hmm. who also is structured. Of course, you would look like that. I'm right. saying you are a go, 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 go. Yeah, I am. Uh, why, why you go, go, go. You slow yourself down. You slow, slow, right. slow. Yeah. That's why you do yoga to slow it down. <laughs> right. That's yeah. how much I want you to respect who you are. You are that, which is okay. why you can help others that are that. And the way that you stop being that is just put your principles in place and your practices in place. And it's even like, I think your girlfriend said, does your brand reflect everything that you really are like, yeah. or does it reflect a little of this and you and it like, cause I finally mm-hmm. kind of clicked around. I was like, oh, she was doing that. And like you say, selling that and trying to do a little of this and doing yes, that. And like, just up, 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 up. Like, that's why I almost think a vision board for your business. You didn't do one this year. Did you do a vision board this year? No, we did. No, not 2022. So you can journal it. You can vision okay. board it. You can okay. write it. It's just right now. I really want to see your business come to life mm-hmm. because I do hear you, you know, a coaching with love would be that I do hear you say a lot. I don't know. I don't know. And I keep going. I really think you do know, you know, it's wellness, you know, it's holistic, you know, right. it's, I mean, you do know a lot, Lorena. Yeah. So I want to, I want to memory mark what you do know so that then we can decipher what you don't, because you also got one more week to keep saying, I don't know. I know you don't okay. know all the way. <laughs> Not only because it's going to give you peace, but it's going to let you know who you're going to attract. 
when I finally realize who I attract are amazing, overachieving, high uh, potential people who are also burned the heck out from giving, giving to every freaking body and doing right. everything. And there's this person that I <laughs> right. am and I attract now. Yeah, because I, I well. want to figure it out. Like, honestly, Kim, yeah. I just don't want to be in this place next year. You know You're what not I mean? going to be. Like, you already aren't. I want you to know that yeah. because you're going to make peace with who you are. And then when you do, imagine all the people you're going to set free. And we will continue on this journey with Lorena and you getting to see her getting coached and um, really getting her business off the ground. Got lots more. We're going to be also sharing with you some of my other clients that I have that own small businesses and some others that I think will really be meaningful for you. Also think about your own, yourself, right? As you look back to move forward, maybe you're going to join us on this journey. And the very first thing to do with that is to, wake up right have those aha moments like whoa